Alright guys, how you doing? So I'm going to do a video today on WebStorm, something I found uh, I had a hard time with. I don't have a GitHub server, and I'm not on Git. This is just a project for me. Uh, I did want to use the WebStorm platform, so I went ahead and bought it, mainly because I like the IDE environment. Um, I like the fact it was fairly easy to set up a project with, with your files. It was fairly easy to get the command line for your server. But one thing I struggled with for a while was how to actually communicate with my server and pull files from it and push files to it and sync files. So I'm going to walk you through how I did that. Now I'm in WebStorm 16.3.2 uh, and I'm not sure this will change in the future but it works today. So what happens is um, obviously I have a project set up already but what you can do is you can go to tools and to get to your server you need to go to tools deployment. Now none of these options will be lit for you yet but you will have um, these three configuration options and automatic upload um, which I have checked I'll go over that in a little bit. But you start in configuration. This is how you can actually tell WebStorm where your server is. So when you're in connection, you need to set up, you, you can actually um, set up a new, a new server. So let's just call this test, um, minor SFTP. You can change that and go ahead and hit OK. Now, if you notice, um, Memento at home is actually bolded where these others are not. This is my default. This is my, <coughs> excuse me, this is my default server. Um, not anymore. Now it is. Um, this will allow you certain features. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head to be quite honest with you. I just use my main project as my default. I'll, I'll uh, upload the, or, uh, update the video when I figure out what that does. So you have three tabs in here. You have connection, mappings, and excluded paths. Um, I have I have some in each. So the name of my app, which is right here, connection, which is SFTP. Uh, I'm using a local server, so this is my local server address. I'm using port 22 because it's SFTP. If it was just FTP, it'd be port 21. Root path is pretty much always slash, at least for a Linux box. Um, username, authorization type password do you want to save your password um, I don't hate myself so I click save password advanced options I never do anything in here there may be some reasons too I'm not aware of them so one thing it's always good to do is test your SFTP connection successfully connected hey that's good uh, root path you can you can auto detect as well if you just want to um, this is detecting the path of my user in Linux home R Pratt since this is my username but that's really not pertinent to me because my app isn't only under my username, it's under the root directory. And you'll see that when we go into mappings next. Uh, web servings URL, since it's a local, it'll, it's um, uh, just an IP address since it's a, it's a local server in my house. If I were on the web, this would actually be a web address. And actually this is my web version, so there's the web address. If notice the SFTP host, uh, as you can do with FTP servers, let's just put the URL. So if we go into mappings, I have my local path, which is obviously on my computer. The way WebStorm works is it, if you don't know, it actually saves all the files to your computer, and then it, it will sync them up to the server. It's assuming that you're developing on your local, on your local, uh, local host, your local computer, and then you will be deploying it to a server once your app works. So this is the, this is where, um, this is where the path is for my current website on my computer. Um, this is a Windows computer, so C being my, my drive, Node being Node, uh, WebStorm is where I load my WebStorm files, and Family Site is where I have this particular site. Deployment path on Memento at home is var w memento.space. So that is my, that's my path there. And now web path on server memento.space is just slash. Um, that worked for me. Excluded paths. This really helped me out a ton. I'm working on a node project, and I don't know why, but I have thousands of files in my node modules, but I don't update them very often, at least not yet. So what I do is I exclude my node modules path, and it makes uploading and downloading to and from the server much faster by a factor of 100. I'm not even joking. It's ridiculous. 
So I had deployment path, I had local path. Um, I just did a deployment path here. This is on my on my Linux server. Okay, so that kind of walks you through here. Once you have these set up, um, that's good. Mappings. If you don't have these set up correctly, you'll get some really weird errors. One thing I noticed when I didn't have these set up correctly, like a web path being slash, root path being slash, one thing I noticed is that when I had those set up, I never got these deployment options. These were grayed out. I never had a chance with them. So make sure that is set up good in configuration. So if we move into options, there's not too much to go on here. Um, but there's one thing. Upload changed files automatically to the default server. On explicit save action, control S. So you can do always, which I don't do always. I always just prefer to, to save it manually. Um, or never. Um, I'm just syncing to my server. It's just how I'm doing it. If you're developing locally and you don't, like my server is a test server. No one sees it but me and, and one or two other people. So I just do control S so I can actually see what, it, what it's like on the web. Um, if you're working locally, you can you would use never. Which brings us to um, the automatic unupload explicit save checkbox. So that's that's when, when that applies. So you can turn automatic upload on and off right there. Now, we have this con configured correctly. These are your options. They're pretty self-explanatory. So download download from your server name, sync with your server name. I pretty much use um, upload and download. I pretty much use these two. I have done compare. That's pr that's a pretty cool feature. Let's see if I can pull that up. So here's a compare. They're they're actually the same. I don't know if I have anything different. Um, let me do that. Let me just put some Ghibli gook in here. And then I can do a compare. So as you can see with the compare here, this is my um, my local host. So this is all the information I did. It has this cool little little slide animation feature. Not an animation, but a cool little feature here that shows exactly this line breaks out into all this content. It's pretty cool. And when you have a bunch of stuff in here, it goes back and forth. Um, so you can kind of really see what's updated and what's different. It's, and it's really easy to tell once you understand what this is. So like this line explodes into these lines. Pretty neat. So let's do this before I save that. Um, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm actually going to save it. If you look, actually you can't see it on the screencast. I don't know if you can or can't, but um, if I save it, there's a little... There's a little blip that occurs down here. You see that little blip? That was it actually saving to the server. It actually will tell you the time allotted, uh, the time that it occurred in, things like that. Do it again. There you go. So that's pretty cool. Now, when you're uploading and you're downloading to the server, uh, upload, download, one thing I noticed is that I was having a hard time because it, this, I would try to... So the way I work is I have I have a web storm at my work and I have a web storm at my home and when I'm when I'm working at home and I upload to the server then I have to and then I go to work I have to download it from my server and when I would update several files I would always notice it said updating one file down here and I'm like why is it updating one file well what I figured out is that whatever I have highlighted here it's going to download that file so what you have to do is if you want to download everything you click on your on your root file and then you would do download, deployment, um, download, or upload if you just wanted to make sure all your changes were saved. And um, by excluding, the reason why the, the exclusion and the configuration is so handy is it does not sync node modules. Oh my God, such a time saver. So I recommend, <clears throat> I recommend doing that. Now obviously if you make changes or you add an NPM module, you're going to want to remove this so it's going to sync correctly. Just keep in mind it's going to take a billion years. So that's pretty much all I have right now on how to work with how to work with um, servers um, within WebStorm. Obviously, this isn't going to work for everyone. This is just my use case scenario, and it took me a long time to figure it out. I had to actually contact WebStorm. I had to do a bunch of searching online. And then someone actually finally on Stack Overflow helped me out to figure this out. So this video is kind of taking all those resources and putting it into one place. Hopefully that other people find this useful. 
Um, leave comments down below if you have any questions or you can add any tips to this that will help some other people that have different, slightly different use cases. Um, my exact use case is I have a server in my home that's just running on a laptop uh, that is just a Linux box and I just develop on my Windows PC. So thank you guys and I hope this helps.